Hello, everyone. Welcome to Talks at Google. I'm Kevin Belk, and today we welcome the cast of Fuller House. So who we have is Candace Cameron Bure, Jody Sweeten, and Andrea Barber. Hi. We've got the awesome 90s plaid couch here for you guys. Oh, Great. fantastic. Look at that. We only sit on, on 90s couches. That's what we heard. We yes, had it shipped yeah. in from LA. <laughs> Uh, San Francisco, excuse me. Uh, so welcome, guys. Uh, welcome you. to Google. Thank you. Thank you. So you guys are back after 21 years uh, since you guys went off the air. Yeah. And so the show takes place 29 years, it said. I love kind of the intro, how they went right into that. So can you just tell us what you three are up to after 29 years later? Well, DJ sadly is widowed. And, uh, but she has three kids, and she's a vet veterinarian. And is that what we're talking about? The characters, right? It's yeah. been a long day. <laughs> I've got to pee. Wait, 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 I've been up since up four. Been doing? I'm like, I, I, years I, I know. I'm on the view. Like, wow, that's really strange. <laughs> Do you need to I'm setting a great tone for this interview. <laughs> so sorry. Um, I'll okay. be your interpreter today. And Thank I will. You. Yes. <laughs> um, Yes, yeah, so then, so DJ, that, that's where she is. She's a single mom raising three kids, and, and a working mom gets overwhelmed, so she invites her best friend and yeah. her sister, or kind of, she doesn't she, well, invite. Yeah, Stephanie, you know, the whole family's back, because uh, Danny is talking about selling the house, uh, which is why the original house is in, in the show. Everyone gets to see that, which I think is as, as much of a character as, as anybody else. And they're all there, and Steph, uh, you know, she really sees her sister struggling and, um, and overwhelmed and needing some help. And so she kind of gives up everything and says, I'm going to move in with you. And then Kimmy decides to move in as well. And uh, I was going to say, she invited herself. Yeah, she kind of, she in, 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 in typical <laughs> Gibbler style, she invites herself. <laughs> and, invited. and the frenemy uh, relationship continues. Yes. Yeah. 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 I got to see the first few episodes, and the first episode was really it just seemed like a mirror image of the first one with you three guys in the lead or three girls in the lead. And so, can you talk about the idea of kind of it's because it's pretty much a reunion, but also taking kind of hey, this is where we were, and then kind of this is where we're going. Like yeah, the the pilot episode really is an ode to all the fans. It's saying. Here we are, we're back together, and we're giving you everything we think you're hoping for. And, and, and it's setting up the premise for what the new show is about, which is really about us three women raising these four kids. So if you haven't heard already, I mean, the original cast is together for the first episode. And then like uh, the other characters, Danny, Jesse, Joey, and Becky, they pop in and out for some episodes. But um, through, throughout the series, but they're not in everyone because it's revolving around this new family. But yeah. that I, I think we realized that we needed to do sort of that reunion moment, that people were really excited for that. But that Fuller House is a show that is about much more than that. But we knew we had to kind of get it out of the way so that you know everyone yeah. wouldn't be like, well, what, oh, what happened? We wanted to see everybody together, you know. So <laughs> we did that. We gave that to everybody, and then kind of continued on with the new series. Well, it was great because because the first episode happened, I was like, oh, this is very, very familiar, and it's great to see all you guys. And then it was literally the second episode, you guys. It was really different actually because it actually went in different directions. And Andrew, I love. We all love Kimmy. We all love Kimmy, right? <laughs> yeah. Kimmy Gibbler. We love Kimmy. And I love, I love the fact that it was so funny because I just remember Kimmy always being there, but actually watching back in the first few seasons prepping for this, Kimmy's character was just kind of the side character and kind of popped in and out and then got more and more in the later episodes. So to have you now as a leading, one of the leading ladies in this, this is it's fantastic. It's thrilling. It's overwhelming. And, and Kimmy is so excited to finally move inside the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's It was her childhood home, too, even though nobody really wanted her there. But um, <laughs> she's finally home, and, and it's exciting, and it's so cool to be here with these women. We're just having such a blast It was together. hysterical because, I mean, we, we, we've been acting since the show. Andrea retired from acting af right after the show. And then we get on the set and we're like, oh, we get to revive these characters. And it, you kind of wonder, you know, how, how's it going to be? And Andrea literally, she gets on the set and she gets a script in her hand and she just like morphs into Kimmy Gibbler, yeah. like without missing a beat. It was, it's, I it was love hysterical. it. Yeah. I love it. Kimmy Gibbler has been hibernating inside of me for the last <laughs> 20 years. And I finally get to unleash her for yeah. the world. I mean, she's Great. hysterical. It's every time Kimmy's on screen, I just I, I die laughing. Well, and your your backstory is very interesting because you have an estranged husband who pops into the episodes here and there, but 
were there any other ideas in terms of what her backstory was going to be and what she was going to be doing? Because you're an entrepreneur, you're an event planner. In the, in yeah, Kimmy is now a party planner, and she right. takes her parties very seriously. <laughs> um, but yeah, Jeff Franklin, our creator and executive producer, um, he he and I talked a lot about what what who is modern Kimmy Kimmy Gibbler now. And um, one of the ideas we threw around was maybe she should be an interpreter for the United Nations, and so she comes in speaking all these languages, and everyone's like, where did that come from? <laughs> um, but we finally settled on, you know, you've got to stay true to the original eccentric characters, so um, she's a party planner. She's still zany. She's still living in the 90s, but she's a modern woman. She's a single mom, and she's helping out DJ, but um, DJ and Stephanie are helping out her, too. Yeah. She plans great parties, though. Yeah. There's like several parties in in the first uh, season of Fuller House, and they're right. all Gibbler style parties. And you're also a DJ. I am a in DJ. It. I I am DJ Tanner. She you stole right. my name. <laughs> Who does that? It's awesome. <laughs> I love that. I am DJ Tanner. So wrong. So that's I'm your. Awesome. <laughs> so that's your career now. Yeah. I yes. Yeah, Steph has been a, a a DJ. She's been traveling the world. She's been a, living sort of an unattached. Not irresponsible, but you know, not really tied down sort of lifestyle. And she comes home, and she was in London, didn't think she was gonna make it, and she comes home and and decides that she really needs to be there for her sister. But Steph's character has been having. Uh, Kimmy. That was Dave Coulier farting off. <laughs> Don't mind that. Um, what happened? You guys have no idea. Who is that? <laughs> What's Sorry, going on? Is him a beat. Right? <laughs> DJ Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, drop the beat. Oh, yeah. Right? Is it mine? Yep. Candace. Okay. Uh, Should I turn this off then? Maybe. We got that. So. There we go. There you go. Just that? yank it out. Alrighty. We'll, we'll put that. it right there here. Okay. I'll hide it behind right. the pillow. Google. <laughs> <laughs> Technology. <laughs> Yeah, you guys really should work on that aspect. No. <laughs> and so you were saying. What was I saying? I was saying sure you were right. You were saying. Sorry. <laughs> wow. Okay. Oh, it's been a long day. Um, no, uh, you know, Stephanie, yeah, she's been having a lot of fun. And so she comes back and really uh, steps into a position of helping her sister out. And it's great because Stephanie gets to kind of transform, you know, in those first few episodes to... Uh, this person who doesn't really want to be grounded anywhere to showing back up for her sister. And then, you know, Steph and Kimmy have this amazing frenemy relationship where they sort of battle but love each other and really, and, and you know, Stephanie knows that Kimmy has been there for her sister and that means a lot to her. So. For sure. And I, I love how it really tackles more adult themes because it was interesting kind of watching that too where obviously you guys were kids and you had those storylines, but was it, interesting and fun and and what was kind of the process of coming up with adult storylines were you guys influencing that with your real life or uh, what was that process well all three of us are moms in real life and so we did meet with all the writers and we're talking about our parenting styles and giving them stories out of our real life that have happened so i know they've they've plucked things from that to also form them into our characters because i that's a a fun aspect of the show is that the three of us, as our characters, parent very differently, mm -hmm. and so we, you know, we we fill in the gaps where where there's a weakness, there's a strength from another. Um, but as far as it, us being the adults on the show and all those storylines, I mean, I think we're just happy we don't have to go to school on our breaks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like when we were kids. Yeah. I mean, it's fun to drive the show this time as yeah. the women and not the kids, but we love working with the new kids on the show and it gives them this, um, we have the most unique perspective in that sense that we can give to them uh, everything that we've already gone through. And at the same time, um, not only teach them, but we kind of can also say, hey, stop complaining because right. we've already done this yeah. too. Like we understand right. and we get it. All right. And so. You guys are on Netflix now, which is phenomenal. And Stamos seemed to be the guy who was kind of pushing for this a lot and always bringing it back up. And he's a producer, I think, on mm -hmm. on the series as well. So, is it been? It's great it, to see it on Netflix. And has it been also different in that you don't have to really be in the network guidelines and you don't have to adhere to 22 minutes and stuff. And has that changed too much? Yeah, or? I mean, I think it's it's you know this is a sort of uncharted territory for for us as far as how to do a sitcom within a much looser framework, which, 
is a real benefit to being on Netflix. You know, we can make the shows a little bit longer. So if it's, you know, 26 minutes, it's like, all right, that's fine. We don't have to panic and cut a bunch of stuff that we think is really good. Um, we're not sort of beholden to, you know, finding out what our ratings are every week and panicking, you know, if, if something, you know, goes up or down. Um, and it, it gives us a lot of freedom to really be able to do a show that the fans love and that the fans want. And I think that that was why this has been so immensely popular and why it had such a, a success at coming back in the first place is that the fans love it. It's a great partnership uh, with Netflix, too, because of the way Full House fans watch Full House. You know, Full House has never been off the air in 30 years, and it's on four, five, six, seven times every night at Nick at Night, so people have already been binge-watching Full House for a long time. <laughs> And so um, when it's released tomorrow at 12.01 AM on Netflix, um, you can just have an all-nighter. You know, you yeah. can watch every episode you want, just all in a row. Um, or you can space them out if you want to savor each episode. When you guys have so many characters that come back, Steve is back for the first episode, and obviously, you know, Bob Saget and, and uh, everyone. And so was there a character from the old show that you wanted to bring back and you couldn't? I, I want to bring back Where's Gia. Who was that was actually yeah. that was actually a social media question. Yeah, I want to bring her back, um, and you know, there's been discussions about it, so we'll we'll see what happens. Season two. Yeah. Wasn't she a really bad influence on you? Yeah. Why do you want to bring her back, <laughs> Stephanie? Making more bad decisions. You haven't been a part of my life, DJ. You don't know what's going on. Um, Only because you stayed away. We've had um, this talk before. We're not can doing you it tell here. Me. We're not doing it here. Are we DG. taking this too far? <laughs> You're being very rude. Right, yeah. I think do we collectively we want, want Kathy, Kathy Santoni? Santoni. Yeah. I want to know if she's still throwing pool parties with her big boobs, you know. <laughs> she's like the girl when you go back to your high school reunion and you want to see if she's still all of it, all that that she was in high school. Right. Or you can be like, ha ha. <laughs> well, I, and I read you guys actually brought your kids back on set and stuff. So what was their experience like seeing their you know, parents back at it. My kids had a blast. They thought it was really fun. You know, the first couple tapings, they were super into it, and then they just wanted to go hang out in my trailer. Uh, <laughs> but they, I mean, they, they loved it. They love seeing my Full House family and watching mommy work and have fun. And, you know, my youngest daughter, Beatrix, she's five, and that's how old I was when I started doing the show, which is just mind-blowing to me that all this time later I have my own kids, and, mm -hmm. and they get to be there witnessing me doing what I love. Yeah. Um, you know, and the, what, what's great about the show as well, because, I mean, it does take off in, in the second episode and start becoming different, but you guys still keep the same format. It's the same all that camera and everything. I mean, was there any discussion once you went there? Because everything seems to be in documentary style mm -hmm. this day and age. Was there any kind of pressure or kind of felt like, oh, maybe we should go to this, or did we really want to keep it as multi-camera? I only knew it to be in the... Yes in the um, original sitcom for camera style. Did you hear anything before that? No, I don't think so. I know there had been some discussion of it back and forth as to what they wanted to do, but I know that Netflix really strongly wanted to uh, bring this genre back uh, and reintroduce it sort of to audiences and uh, really make it popular with their family viewing, the, the multi-camera. Yeah, and I think it's important that we're not trying to, you know, break into something new. This is a show that right. people have loved for for 30 years. And so if, if if the format was changed too dramatically, people would say, this isn't what I remember. This isn't right. even what I'm wanting. So it is for that fan that I think a lot of the people that are wanting to watch the show again, it, whether they were kids or the same ages as us have grown up, they're now maybe their parents, maybe you have, have kids, and they don't make shows in that format anymore. And it's like, you want to go, I, I want to have the same experience with my child that I had with my parents growing up. And that's why I think it works in its original format. Right. For sure. And was there any, what was the toughest part or the scariest part just about getting this back together and, and putting this on the air, online? We wanted to do the legacy proud, and we didn't want to do a cheesy reunion movie. There's been some of those done in right. the past. Um, and we didn't want people to, to make fun of this, this reunion. Um, so yeah, we wanted to do it right. We wanted the right people involved. So getting Jeff Franklin, our original creator, and Bob Boyette, our original executive producer involved, um, was critical. 
And once they were on board, I felt a lot more confident that this was a show that was going to be done right. It's not just a cheesy movie. It's not a reboot. It's not Full House 2.0. It really is a continuation of a story that started 30 years ago when we were little kids. That's great. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, we're going to start taking audience questions in a few minutes, if you guys want to start lining up. Um, we do have some questions from social media, though, that we want to get to. So uh, some of this is from Twitter, some of this is from G+, some of this is from our audience here. Um, favorite direct reference to the old show that we can look for? Um, I mean, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot. I mean, the old catchphrases are back. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, I think that fans will be pleasantly surprised at the amount of, you know, Easter eggs kind of hidden throughout the show of, of, of reverence to the original series. You brought back the blue couch I saw. The original really blue couch. It really is the original. Yeah. It's been in storage, no joke, and yeah. the two blue and the chairs. the two blue chairs. And so, so original that Andrea was allergic to it and was coughing every time she'd be in the living room. Yeah, we finally figured out after the first week, I thought, how come every time I have a scene in the living room, I have an asthma attack? I can't, I can't say my lines like this. And Jody's actually the one that figured out. She said, you're allergic to the couch. And I walked over there and sat down and I like felt this little puff of dust. You know, yeah. maybe it was just in my mind. But um, yeah, I was allergic. So I had to go out and get it cleaned organically and everything. <laughs> No problems after that first week. But the whole set was rebuilt, right? Yes. From scratch. Yeah. From scratch they and from photos job. because they lost the original blueprints of the set. Yeah. Like like yeah, it was a two weeks before task. we got picked up officially, Where? they destroyed the blueprints thinking like, oh, we're never going to need these. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm it, like, it was within a few weeks, uh, they went and like, oh, you know what we need? And they went and they were like, oh, we just like destroyed those. <laughs> so they had to go back and watch hundreds of hours of footage. <laughs> you didn't, just them. No, no, no. I was actually not out there hammering <laughs> right. the set together by myself. Right. No. Andrea, where can we get your bacon and eggs scarf and donut purse? And I not get me, that question a lot. Like, the show has, hasn't even been released yet, and I'm already getting questions about Kimmy Gibbler accessories. Uh, so there might be a Kimmy Gibbler gift shop in the works <laughs> at some point. Um, I don't even know. Our, our wardrobe stylist is so fantastic, and I don't know how she found all of these things, but I'm, I hear from fans that the bacon and egg scarf is available on Etsy somewhere, um, and the donut purse is actually a Betsy Johnson purse. And um, when, when Fuller House posted some of those episodic still photos, of me wearing the donut purse, Betsy Johnson herself actually chimed in and was like, hey, that's my purse. Thanks, Kimmy, for wearing it. Aww. Yeah, it's really cool. And DJ, this was, at first thing people were shocked when they heard that you're going to be a widow because everyone just assumed you were with Steve. But Steve is actually alive and well. So why Wait, didn't so she marry Steve? What? Well, aren't you happy I didn't marry Steve? Because <laughs> yeah. that would stink. Kill him off. never see yeah. him again. Um, <laughs> oh, he's dead. <laughs> Bad question. Yeah. No, I think I, I th it gives everyone hope that he that I didn't marry him because now he is back, uh, and yeah, we wanted that. I don't I don't know. Well, I do know why it. No, maybe I don't know why it didn't work out. I don't know what you're asking. You oh, broke oh, why, why did I why did I break up with him? Well, well, he did get married first, but I broke up with him on the mountains. Yeah. DJ just wasn't ready for that relationship <laughs> in high school. <laughs> And he was moving off to college, and you guys were right. Going they know much directions. more about DJ's life than I do, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll take our first audience question. Hi, my name is Lisa, and I just want to say you all look so amazingly fit. And I'm <laughs> oh, thank so you. I like you, Lisa. And I'm thank a fitness you. enthusiast, oh, so I was black wondering. Black pants, they're really slimming. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys must exercise, and I just wonder how you like. What do you do, and how do you fit it into your clearly very busy lives? Fitness I, guru, so can you run well, marathons? You, I know, and she's no. a marathon runner. She, how, tell them how many marathons and halves you've run. Okay, I just finished my fourth full marathon, LA Ooh. Marathon, uh, like 11 days ago. So my feet barely recovered in time to put on these heels. Um, and yeah, 25 half marathons. Amazing. And then I've roped her into a few races, the Spartan or the Tough Mudder, yeah. mud runs. Because I like, mud run. yeah, I like strength stuff. I work out about five days a week, and I, I travel every single week. I commute L.A. to New York because I'm co-hosting The View here in New York, but my family's in L.A. So it's a struggle, but I go after work. We're actually going to work out We're at 7 o'clock tonight. Because uh, I just feel better if yeah, I no, I'm, do it. I'm the lazy one of the group. I only work out like three or four days a week, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> 
and I love bacon. So, <laughs> yeah. Hey, so first of all, thank you for coming. This is like a childhood dream fulfilled. Oh, so cool. Thank uh, you. <laughs> uh, Jody, this question is for you. It's going to be a weird one. Um, the, Try me. So my, my favorite GIF that I've been using for, I mean, since GIFs were kind of invented, is How Rude. Can we get an inner, uh, a reenactment of How Rude? Yeah. <laughs> how rude. <laughs> Thank and you. that's totally not a weird question, and that's kind of one that I get all the time, <laughs> which is a huge compliment. And the fact Thank that, you. yeah, it was like number seven GIF of 2015, I was like, score. I think I've even beat out Kanye, which, yeah. yeah okay, so. <laughs> but I think it was like misspelled Kanye. But still, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, guys. Also, huge dream come true. Um, but I wanted to know, so having known Danny Tanner as my childhood life and then sort of getting to know Bob Saget, the comedian, <laughs> very different people, I wanted to know as kids on the set like which guy did you guys know all of the above yeah <laughs> but you were really young like how did that like i guess as you got older did it more come out like yeah, bob reigned it in the guys reigned they knew there were little kids on the set and our moms were on the set with yeah, us every day right. by okay. law they were required to be there <laughs> so the moms every once in a while would make their rounds and be like okay boys you know let's watch the language um I, the guys did rein it in i actually went to the laugh factory with bob when i was about nine years old and watched him do a set <laughs> i'm not kidding um not intentionally i was i would spend he had three daughters that i was very close with and we were, as I was spending the weekend at his house, and he's like, okay, wait, hold on, we've got to go, we, I'm doing a set. I'm like, all right, cool. He's like, your mom's probably gonna kill me, but whatever, you know? And I was like, oh, it's fine, we're good, you know, nine, whatever, 10. And I sat on the back speakers in the back of the Laugh Factory. I got to give him his little five minute warning with the flashlight and like tell him it was time to get off the stage. And it was kind of awesome, it was hilarious. And I mean, I have a great love for stand up comedy, uh, and I think it really came from those two guys. Yeah, growing up with them, yeah. So did that really shape your guys' sense of humor? Because you guys were so young when you were on the show. That's why I them. needed Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's why it, it's why I needed drugs. No. Uh, <laughs> hey, look. If you can't joke about it, you know what I mean, right? Like, uh, no. I, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's no segue here. There's, There's no, no transition. No, no, there isn't. But you know what? I, I mean, I have a pretty dark and, and crazy sense of humor, and I do think that I, I gained a real appreciation for sort of uh, the darker humors from those guys, because they're pretty dark. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, too. Bob, Bob shaped my sense of humor, to which I had to, like, turn it off <laughs> and reshape Completely. it. Right. Hi, I'm Misty, um, and uh, my heart's racing, which is funny. But um, as you can see, we're in a corporate environment, but I did a tribute to you three by crimping my hair today. Oh, yeah, I love this it. Is not, this is not natural. Um, she was I could the, she was the see first one in the Candace room today, Candace staring at me, being like, I wonder if that's her real hair. But um, <laughs> So at Google, we're taught to take one risk every day that makes us really uncomfortable. We call it uncomfortably excited. So my question is, would you make a Googler's dream come true? and take a picture with me crimping DJ's hair. <laughs> yes! Totally! Yeah. That is awesome. So, I found this, which is the three of you. Oh! Sorry, it's, it's, a a it's a trading card. I'm going to need that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you take it. All right. You want to get me down? Oh, my God. I want you guys to Your necklace very... is fabulous, Thank by the you. way. I love you that. It's amazing. It's Google yeah. color. It's really cute. I actually thought about what I'd wear to compliment. Um, I, I was worried about jealous, what you were going to wear at home. Oh, she's setting she she like directing it, like this thing. <laughs> she's good. Yeah, I'll just stare. She's got a crimp in there. She's about to touch her head. Be she careful. Listen to her. She might be scared. It's not, it's not on. Don't worry. It's not plugged Ready? in. Ready? We're smiling right there. <laughs> Thank you. You are so welcome. <laughs> welcome. That was awesome. The fact that you have a crimping iron impresses me greatly, okay? 45 minutes to warm up. That was, that was. Wow. And that, yeah, that was quick in like 1987. That was, was the best question on the press tour so that far. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> 
follow that. Who wants to follow that? Good luck. This is going to get weirder. (laughs) Yeah, you have a curling iron. Hello. I have two things. One, you three are all incredibly gorgeous. And two, I have a question for the majestic human being named Candace. Um, Ooh, look at you, majestic like an eagle. (laughs) I know that you were on Dancing with the Stars, and that is one of my all-time favorite shows. I was wondering how your experience there was. Did you like it more than Full House or equally? Oh. No pressure. No pressure. (coughs) Nothing beats out you two. Okay, good. Just check it was one of the greatest experiences of my life, so much so that I, I wrote my third book using Dancing with the Stars as the framework for it. So it's called Dancing Through Life. But I use that framework to talk about courage and conviction because like you, stepping, you have crimped hair, I'm talking to you, and you're like tweeting out right now. like my brave moment to step out on a stage and dance, which I've never danced before on live television every week, and I wanted to throw up every week because it was so scary. You were great, by the way. Thank you. (laughs) So it it really, it changed me a lot, and it gave me a lot of courage, and and I'm, I I take a lot more risks now, and I'm not scared because I got through that process. I enjoyed it, but it was scary. I loved it, though. And she killed it every week until the finals. Thank you. Thanks, Kimmy. Um, Okay, so I have two feelings questions for you guys. Um, One is that for so many of us, the show is very nostalgic. So I was wondering what it was like for you guys, what it felt like to sort of step back into that nostalgia. Because I think for us, watching the show is going to be as close as we can get. But you guys almost went back in time. And so I was wondering what that was like. And then also, how did it feel when they changed your bedrooms? And you guys basically, when they, in the real in the original, when they read, I, for me, it was a little bit traumatic. When they <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm and with you on that. I was like, what are these orange walls? Where's my my geometric shaped Yeah, remember uh, the red spread? Remember the red yeah. bed? So well, it didn't matter. Yeah. It sad. But we had to move on. <laughs> right, yeah. I think we, fu- when did we change that too? It was like the 60s? I don't know, I felt like it was full of bits. I don't even remember. Anyway, uh, it was traumatic. We were sad. But we did have input as to what our rooms were going to look like. At least I did. Did they give you input? What, back in the day? Yeah. I thought she was talking about the new one. No? I well, I haven't seen the new bedrooms. Yeah, I thought it was the new one. Okay, talk- whatevs. Pay attention. It's a long day, people, okay? <laughs> I meant when you guys were like When we were little, six, right. I'm sure like, now it wouldn't so be traumatic. Dizzy. We know it's a set, <laughs> it's a thing, it's okay. I was traumatic. Oh, I was traumatized this time around. <laughs> They haven't changed your bedrooms. <laughs> You're not even in your own bedroom. Can you scratch my back? Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to be cuddled. <laughs> We're charting into This has gotten right weird, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's gotten, gotten weird. really weird. No. <laughs> uh, we get a little loopy. And yeah, we do. By the end of the day, fun. it's weird. <laughs> it's really weird. Um, no, but the, I don't think it was... I mean, we had fun. We got to have input. They were always really great at including the kids in some of the stuff like that that went on. So we, we got to talk about what, we, what posters we wanted and what we wanted our rooms to look like. Um, and stepping back in, as far as nostalgia goes, I, I, to stand on the set and work with these people that you know I, we walked away from from that home of ours 21 years ago was an incredible experience. And I don't think that it's I don't think anything really can fully prepare you for what that feels like to stand there in the kitchen with these people after you know 21 years ago, really tearfully saying goodbye and closing the door on that moment. And one final one. Uh, hello. Um, this is crazy. I think everyone in this room is geeking out right now. Um, <laughs> and uh, I've never seen anything like it. But um, my question is, speaking of 90s n- nostalgia, uh, I work for Google Music. And so I'm dying to know what each of your favorite 90s song is. Well, we danced to mine on the pilot episode. You can see it in the trailer right now. It's mm-hmm. the right stuff. Oh, 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 yeah, she's crimped, crimped hair dancing. <laughs> the right stuff. <laughs> I got, uh, it might be You Ought to Know by Alanis Morissette. Oh, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> love, I that's love awesome. Alanis. I, oh, God, I don't even know if I could pick one, uh, but I'm a 90s hip-hop girl, so that was kind of what I grew up with and liked. I was never... Yeah, the boy band thing wasn't my wasn't my steez. Yeah, <laughs> baby's got back. 
No, more, more, no, more like Tupac, Biggie, like that. Yeah. Oh, that's me. Yeah, I, yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Although I did, not, and I think actually uh, uh, that song was earlier, like late '80s, because I seem to remember. Oh, was it? No, Baby's Got Back, Sir oh, Mix-a-Lot, okay, that was yeah. later. Never mind. Yeah. We're not going to go into a full dissection of this <laughs> right now, but yeah. This one is too excited to not ask, so I quickly. Know, just like we'll everyone. shut up and let you ask. <laughs> <answer. laughs> we have too much. We're just going to actually sit here when everyone leaves and keep talking. Cool. Well, thank you for letting me ask my question. And again, totally off the moment for us right now. Um, this one is kind of awkward, but I wanted to ask it. So when I was, I was a little bit young for the show, and I actually called the show Michelle because I loved her character so much. And so, you know, it was kind of sad for me to see that Mary-Kate and Ashley weren't going to be returning. So I just wanted to see what your take on that was. Yeah, yeah Mary-Kate and Ashley have moved on from the show. They've moved on from Hollywood. Um, they're not in front of cameras anymore, and we totally respect their decision to do that. But I think um, we get that question a lot from the press about, you know, why aren't they coming back? But I think once you start to watch um, the first few episodes of Fuller House, you'll see that it is a very full house. We have even more characters than we yeah. did originally, if you can believe it. And so um, we reference Michelle's character on the show, and um, she's still a part of the family, but I, I don't think the character will be missed because there's so much packed into this show. Awesome, yeah. and I still loved you guys too. I just happened to call it Michelle when I was little, but you guys were great. I've, I've heard Thank actually in, that in Japan they call the show Michelle. <laughs> Oh. Strangely enough. There we go. There you go. I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I've heard, I've heard that that's like a common thing that like nickname for Full House in Japan is Michelle. Funny. Well, thanks, guys. Oh, right. <laughs> but I think also not having Michelle kind of brought your character a little more forward too, Andrea. I think it's having the balance of you, you three has been just, it's been so yeah. fun and so interesting to see. Yeah, I think it's great. We've got the sister relationship and <laughs> hey, hey. Natalie. It's perfect. Clearly. <laughs> We love each other. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. So let's thank, thank you for being you guys here, guys. Thank you for coming. We appreciate thank it. You so, much. so you can catch Fuller House on Netflix February 26th at 12:01. So check it out, guys. All the episodes will be on there. So yeah. that's right. So uh, uh, thank you guys for being here, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you guys. Thanks, guys.